in Chamonix we are explorers. Just because the nature around us here is so incredible that it has always pushed people to explore further, to go higher, and just to discover the world around us. I grew up here, so I have that in me, but I'm also a scientist, and when I became a scientist, I realized that doing science has actually all to do with exploration. With the exception that we are not exploring the Earth, but we explore the unknown territory of knowledge. And believe me, it's crucial. It's crucial for science, of course, but also for the whole human society. And to show you that, uh, I will bring you into my word and what interests me right now as a scientist, which is that, these little bats. <laughs> and uh, because we don't know a lot of things about them and they are completely an unknown territory. Just look at them. They are so diverse, right? Some of them have, like, they look like a pig, like a dog, like, we don't know exactly how they look like, but they are so different and with so many different colors. But they also do different things. Most of them eat insects, for example, but some of them eat like fruit, nectar, pollen, even small bats, or fishes, or even blood, which is kind of creepy, but that's what they do. And we have no idea about how this diversity arises. We don't know why we have so many species, like 1,300 species. And it's an issue for us as biologists because, of course, we have to know how species arrive to understand how they are and their diversity. And so, well, of course, if we want to study them, we have to go where they live. And they live actually everywhere in the world <laughs> with different uh, species density, as you can see on this map. So, of course, we can go in the northern hemisphere to catch them. So here, for example, in the US. But since the diversity is in the tropics, in red here, well, we have to go there, which is cool. Uh, so we go, for example, to Belize here. You see the Mayan temple because they just love to be around these ruins. Here you have a little uh, fruit guy and the bat crew uh, people I'm working with. And because they are also everywhere in the tropics and we have different species everywhere, we go to Puerto Rico, for example, in the caves, uh, which is kind of cool too. And we also go to Trinidad. Here it's a fish bat with very, very long arms and uh, some abandoned houses because they just love uh, to roost around. So we study bats and now we have the bats, what we can do with them. Actually, exploring bats in science, it's like exploring the earth. When you explore the earth, you can't explore everything at the same time. You have to start in a place and then expand from that place. It's the same with science, except that we start with different question. And uh, I will start with a precise question I'm interested in, in in my lab, which is bad vision. And I'm pretty sure you're kind of puzzled about that because a lot of people think bats are blind. Do you think bats are blind? Some of you? Yeah, some of you. Uh, well, fake news, they are not. <laughs> and uh, they are actually very, they see very well like in very dim light, they have roads like us. Uh, but some um, papers recently have shown that some of them can even see some colors. But it was done at very few species, so we don't really know what's going on, and we don't really know why they can see with a brighter light. And so in my lab, we study the situation in like up to 200 different species of bats, representative of the diversity, to just understand how they see and what they can see. And we found fun results. Most of them, can see one color around green, greenish stuff during the day. So they have a pretty like a black and white vision. But some of them can see two colors, the fruit and the, some nectar bats. So it's actually like being colorblind, instead that they can see green and UV light that we can see. And it's very cool because it shows us different things. First, uh-oh. Well, I can continue. <laughs> First, um, it, it shows us how um, it's important, like how vision in bats is more complex than we thought. Because they don't only see one color, they can see even some of them different colors. And it's in, important for us because we correct the misconception we have about science. It's also important for uh, science in general because with that, we understand how species evolve. We understand the diversity. And so we are able to go further and further into what we know about science, how species evolve and whatsoever. And bats are actually um, represent 20% of mammals. And we are mammals, 
So the more we know about mammals, the more we will also be able to understand about how, how what we do and whatever. There is also something else that is important about them. It is biodiversity. As you know, uh, a lot of species are disappearing right now. And like 25% of bats are in danger, which is an issue. And um, well, here you have an example of this diversity. And um, if they disappear before we are able to study them, it will be an issue because we will lose this reservoir of thing and we will also lose a lot of um, potential to understand how species evolve and how animals live and everything. But okay, you can say, well, it's all about, it's still about science. What about people? Bats actually are very important actors of our environment. They are key, um, key things in ecosystems. For example, they eat mosquitoes and they eat a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of insects, like up to 3,000 insects per night, which is a lot. So if you have mosquitoes around your house, you really want to have bats there because they will eat everything. But also, they will regulate the populations. And so if they disappear again, um, well, we will have issue with growing population of insects. They are also important for fruit. Here you have this cute little guy eating like a banana. They really, really love that, oh yeah. <laughs> and um, they eat that, but then they poo everywhere, of course. And by doing that, they will just put the seeds everywhere in the world. And so, uh, not in the world, like where they are. And they, uh, so they, they will fertilize different places. So they are very important for the dissemination of like 50 different species, which is important. Same thing with pollen here. This guy is a pollen guy and covered by pollen. And they are implicated in the pollination in like 500 different species uh, of trees. And um, because of that, well, if they disappear, it, this pollination won't be efficient. And for example, they do very important fruit for us, like mangoes and tequila. I love tequila. I don't want that to disappear. So it's important to be sure that we know a lot about them to be able to protect them, such as vision, echolocation, and everything else. But you can say, okay, it's still not important for human health or for human stuff. Well, actually, you can see that here, but I have a picture of a vampire bat. People are studying vampire bats because they are cool, they eat blood, and they are kind of um, like a special mammal eating blood. You don't have so many of them that, that do that. Okay, there we go, we have the images. So you can see the blood here, this guy eating blood. And you can see the other guy uh, just crawling under the chicken to be able to bite the chicken and to uh, lick the blood. But to be able to do that, they inject an anticoagulant so they can lick the blood for a long time. And when they bite you, I mean, of course it happens sometimes, you will bleed for like 12 hours. So it works pretty well. And it's actually a field of research. If you look at that, well, it's scientific articles showing that um, these anticoagulants, it's right now considered to be a treatment for strokes, but also for thrombosis, because it's so efficient. And so it shows you how, if you study something like bats, because it's diverse and everything, you can find something for human health and something that can be really useful. And so this diversity is an important reservoir for a lot of things for us. And I will finish on that uh, example. Um, okay, so you can see it. It's a bat robot. Some people are studying bat flight. So it's exactly like a bat because they fly so precisely to be able to catch insects, but also to wander around that um, it's, it's really interesting to study. And actually by doing that, it's people from my university with Caltech Institute of Technology. They uh, realize that it's so precise that it can be used for in the army for drones but also, for example, in the future to deliver some packages, like you order something on Amazon, well, a bat can bring it to you. <laughs> and so it shows you how if you, if you just study something as nerdy as bat flight, you can have useful application. So again, uh, studying this kind of thing can bring a lot of things for us. And it's my last example. What, so what, what is my take home here? My take home is never stop exploring bat and science. And I'm not paid by any brand to say that, but <laughs> never stop exploring science because uh, it's so important in, in our day to be able to discover new things. And it can have so many important things for a society. 
Thank you very much for your attention.